Alright guys, I'm playing around with EV Next, and it is a real-time displacement, which is, I think, so much better than Cycles in its own right. So, I'm going to show you guys how to kind of get here, and, you know, you kind of play around with this thing and do whatever you want to do. But you can animate this, and throw some geometry nodes on there, and get some really, really cool results. So, without any further ado, let's jump right in. Alright guys, it's time to actually have a little bit of fun and do something with Eevee next. And if you haven't done this yet, uh, you gotta jump in. This is not necessarily something new, but Eevee next being a real-time displacement is pretty sick. So, let's jump right in and check this thing out. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love getting free textures. I don't know what it is about it, but I just love it. So I'm going over to polyhaven.com and I'm just going to browse some of their textures. And we want to put a displacement on a couple of different things. Immediately, I like this uh, wood stone, wood stone pathway? How do you get away with saying that? Anyways, I'm going to grab this. Uh, I'll get it in 4K. I think that'll be efficient. And I'm going to back out of here and I'm looking for something very specific, like a like a hard tile with a smooth kind of, yeah, here we go, slab tiles. That's what I wanted. 4K, download, yeah, all that looks good. All right, so let's jump back over to Blender. All right, so let's go ahead. We can just start off from the cube, no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and throw a sub D on this. I'll crank the levels up to about five for each one of these just for now. And I'll go ahead and shade that smooth. I want to go ahead in the shader material editor and I want to grab where to go. There we go. I want to grab the principal BSDF and with that highlighted, I can hit control shift T. What that's going to do is it's going to open up a window and it's going to allow you to select a texture set. All right. So I'm going to come over here and I named this something like textures. So texture for EV next. I want to go into the woodstone because I just don't think it's possible in the first place. And I'm going to pull this out. Now I can select all of these. And the big deal is making sure that this has a displace in it. So it's got a DISP for displace 4K. Now I can just go ahead and click the principal shader, add. I want to jump over, go from cycles to EV next. And if you haven't done that yet, actually, just real quick, under edit and preferences, uh, what you want to do is go to the experimental tab and you could turn on EV next right here. You might have to restart Blender, but no big deal, right? So now I'm in EV next. Let's go ahead to the render side of this. And there's basically no lights in the scene, but as you see, we've already got a reaction. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw a plane in. I'll bring the plane down. In fact, I'll actually bring our object up once I get a little bit of light in here I'm gonna go with an area light because I like area lights they're very fun let's see we'll move that over kind of come at it from the side go to the light properties and let's crank this thing up let's make sure we have scene lights turned on and then we'll see what we've got starting to look pretty cool let's see if I can't just make this work a little bit better because that's kind of washed that looks cool and I will add a little bit of a light from the side. And it is good to grab one of these, like the plane or whatever it is, and treat it like a bounce card and throw a plain white, full white diffused material on it. And I'll actually pull up the Light Magic Studio for this. Um, so. Now we've got this scene. I'll just go ahead and add a camera actually. And I think that if we grab all of this and rotate this 180 degrees, it'll be facing the camera. Looks cool. Now I can make that the active camera so I can kind of see what's going on. Probably just go ahead and, well, that's gonna be a pain. So here's what you can do with these lights when they're a pain like that. You can come over here to the constraints, add a constraint. Add a track to, pick a target. The target will be our mesh object here. And so now as I move the light around, 
it's not like screwing around being a real pain. Uh, let's select this. Let's change the displace and bring the scale down to something like 0.2 and then kind of Hold shift and left mouse to kind of bring it up from there. Kind of see how that's going to end up looking. It seems a little glitchy still, but I think it's pretty good. And you can play around with the mid-level perhaps. Get just a little bit better set up. All right, not too bad. Now I want to come over to the normal map and kind of mess around with the normal map a little bit too. And we've got something really cool here. This looks really good. So something like a .04. Kind of ends up being all right for that. Very cool, very cool. So wood, stone, pathway, whatever. It just ends up making something really neat. And of course, with the light magic add-on, I can just grab that light real nice and quick and bring the uh, kind of bring the mood down just a little bit. Let's see what this ends up looking like. Probably just go ahead and pull. Let's see, close up, and I want to do a focus here. Portrait, mid range. I think I like it right about here because the camera was too close. Like some of the presets I've got, the camera doesn't come in that close. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and try the other texture on here. I'm going to dump that off, click new. Grab my principal BSDF, Control Shift T, the letter T for Tango, and I'm back out of here. And let's go into the slab, pull up textures, pull up all these, and just go ahead and hit OK on that, and we'll see what we get. Oops, come on back. That is really, really cool. All right, that's nice. I like that. Oh, yeah, and the thing I was going to show you a second ago completely got sidetracked. This is too much fun. So let's just say you have done this, and you have zoomed in here, and you're trying to get over there, but you're mouse wheeling like crazy, and it's not working, and you're going, you're going crazy. So what you can do is you can just hit... Alt L if you have my add on, and you can frame on selected. Oh, I've got to select something. Alt L and frame on the selected object, and it's going to bring you right back in. And let me go ahead and get lost again, real quick. And I'm way out here, can't get there. I just want to focus in on any object I can get a hold of. You don't have to have the add on to do it. You can just go to view, frame selected, or number pad, period, and it'll pull right in. And that's just such a big relief to be able to do something like that and jump right in. All right, let's screw around with this texture a little bit. I like playing around with the scale. The mid-level isn't really too important to me. I think I just have like a little bit of a degrade there on the displacement. I'm going to have to kind of play around with this a little bit later on to kind of see. Yeah, you kind of play with the normals. That looks really good. I really, really like. And I suppose there would be a few options that you could kind of screw around with. You know, you pull the normal strength. That's basically what I'm working with here. All right, definitely not done yet. Okay, so we can kind of play around this thing a little bit more. Let's see what else we can do with it. Uh, one thing I want to do is we can go to simple if we want to. Um, this is a cube. Let's scale it down. It is a displacement, so it should work out nicely for this. And I'm going to move all the texture space and stuff out. And I think we can get rid of that card for now. All right, so for our little object here, let's just move this below the plane just a little bit. Grab the plane, come over to a Geometry Nodes workspace, click New. Let's Shift A S, put in Instance on Points, drop it in, Shift A S. Let's put in a grid and snap it right between here. It's going to cut off the group input, but doesn't really matter. Let's bring the cube over here and we can go ahead and instance that. Now it's probably going to come up with some kind of a big giant blob. We're going to have to bring our scale down and it might have just been a good idea to have done that ahead of time. You know, for anybody who just crashed their PC. I do apologize. All right, so we could bring this to point one perhaps something like that and we can leave that under there because it doesn't matter for now and what you want to do 
is we can bring the um, size of this out a little bit, but let's get it something like three for now is probably good. Let's bring the vertices count up to 16. And what that's going to do is that's going to effectively give us a nice tile floor. And I'm a little choppy here for some reason. Oh, yeah. Got to click relative. <laughs> there we go. So make sure to click relative so you don't get screwed up. And let's bring this back down. Something kind of manageable. Something like that. There we go. And you can kind of play with this and pull the cracks in if you want, just for the uh, sole purpose of just getting this to look really good. Not too worried about it. Now, there are just oodles and oodles of things you can do with this. But let's just to show you one thing. Shift A S. I'm going to put in a combine X, Y, Z. I'm going to plug that in because it's a vector to a vector. And now we can do Shift A S. I'll put in a random value. Now I do want to reset this point to point 0.1 because remember that is the scale and we don't want to throw this thing out and crash the PC because I'm trying to crash you guys. All right, and I'm going to bring this max down to point 0.1 as well. And I'll throw this value into the Z so that way the random value is only on... Whew, that was crazy. I just had to take a contact out. Don't ask me how an eyelash gets behind it. So anyways, we want to leave the X and Y alone the way it is and just want to offset a random value on the Z. So I can kind of bring this up ever so slightly and kind of create some extra displacement. And then of course your seed value will do a little bit more for you. And this does look like it needs to be uh, sub D just a little bit more. I don't really <laughs> want to crash this thing out, but let's see. And... If I put a sub D right here, it might just clean that up a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. You know, it's just tons and tons of uh, applications here. It's kind of difficult to get rid of some of the clipping and little shading errors, but I kind of managed to do it, just kind of tweaking the scale, the mid-level, the strength, and then just kind of like overall how it looks. And so, but before we are done, you know what we have to do with this since it's a texture and it's Blender. Shift A S, got to put in a noise texture. Let's drop it in. And remember the factor is basically a single, uh, it's like a float value. And color is a vector and this scale is a vector. So what we can do is throw that on and good old fashioned 4D right here. And you go in the W factor and you can hit uh, Shift hashtag, which is just number three type in frame and then forward slash like 600 or so uh, go ahead and pull up a timeline and let's pull in a little animation and test it out because ultimately i mean if it's going to do anything uh, ev next real time it needs to be able to do something like this and as <laughs> as we do it we see that you wouldn't be able to do this um at all and i got this a little high you wouldn't be able to do this and be able to see your displacement inside of cycles just wouldn't happen and so you can kind of play around with the factor here as well maybe add some distortion to it to kind of break it up in fact that actually got it moving a little bit better and this almost looks like a uh, other than a gelatinous blob it kind of looks like an earthquake on something you know It'd be kind of cool you could animate that so could bring the vertice count down and then you've got these funky little blobs moving on here and so that's like real-time displacement man it's pretty cool anyways you guys go play with this thing i'll catch you all in the next one hope you guys found this informational useful smash that subscribe smash that like and as always thank you for tuning in and let's get started